Good afternoon, Begbrook. I'm so glad to see that you're back for chapter 30 of The Explorer. We've got this chapter and then one more left. I am so excited. I wonder what adventure they're going to get up to in our last two chapters. When you're sitting comfortably, let's find out. Chapter 30. Another kind of exploring. The field they landed in was a large one, used for grazing cattle. It was long and as green as the Amazon. They bumped painfully, rose and thumped down again. The cows bellowed in terror. If they bellow, it means they're shouting. Terror just means that they're frightened. And scattered. The front wheel shook, the back wheel bucked. There was a moment where it felt as if they would flip wing over tip, but the plane shuddered, roared and stilled. The cows never fully recovered. For the rest of his life, Fred would feel gratitude when he smelt freshly mown grass. The rest of it was a blur. Fred and Con burnt the plane by dropping a lighted branch into the engine, Leela standing well back with Max in her arms. They sat in the grass, watching the yellow wings turn red and waited. Before long, the fire attracted a crowd. There were hordes of people. Hordes of people just mean that a big group of people came. Shouting in languages Fred didn't know, with Leela attempting to interpret, which means to translate it into the language that Fred could understand. Then a journey by horse to a family with a motor launch. Doctors, the boat ride, Manus, a hospital for Max, telegrams, telephone calls, a man and a woman tiptoeing into a hospital room and gathering Max and Leela so tightly in their arms they gasped for breath. Who do you think the man and woman are who are hugging Max and Leela in the hospital? I'm just thinking and wondering, maybe it's their parents. And then a huge ocean liner with a gold walled dining room and steak and ice cream and a piano that Leela played, hesitantly, beautifully, seated between her two parents with Baka around her neck, while Con and Max slept in circles around the mirrored ballroom, scandalising the other passengers. Fred sat with his knees tucked up on one of the silk back chairs and watched them. He tried to speak sternly to his body, but whenever he thought of his father, his fingertips and knees began to quiver with nerves and hope. Don't, he told himself. Don't. It's an office day. He has to work. He'll send the housekeeper. Each day, the air grew cooler every hour. The smell of the sea changed from green to blue. And then, before he had time to set his thoughts into straight lines, to brush the green of the Amazon from his heart, the ship was heading towards the dock. A row of people stood by the waterside, their fists tight, their eyes vivid with tension and longing. Fred raked them for a familiar face. The crew lowered the gangplank, and Leela and Max let out a cry. Their grandmother stood at the barrier, her arms stretching out towards the ship. The two of them hurtled down the gangplank. The two of them hurtled down the gangplank and were swept up in her embrace. Their parents followed laughing. The old woman had the same wicked tilt to her eyebrows as Max. Con, called a voice. Con turned and her face flashed, suddenly alight. Fred turned in time to see her great aunt, standing upright and gaunt and shaking with emotion as she watched her great niece descend the gangplank. Fred saw Con's aunt reach out and take hold of her wrist. She held it in both hands as if to make sure Con was real. Fred followed at a distance. Nobody called his name. He stood still in the bustle of the customer's shed, looking out towards the ship. He tried to still the roar of disappointment in his chest. And then suddenly, Fred saw his father. His suit crumpled beyond recognition, which means that he couldn't recognise him. His coattails flying, running towards him, pushing aside sailors and women in elaborate hats, flying faster than any aeroplane. I thought I'd lost you, he said. He pulled him so close Fred felt his ribs creak next to his heart. I could not have borne it. I could not. Fred buried his face hard in his father's coat. He thought of the man alone again, striding out through the jungle. He could almost hear his voice. Every human on this earth is an explorer. Sometimes exploring is a word for walking out into the unknown. Sometimes it's a word for coming home. So all that time he was so worried that his dad didn't miss him. And the whole time actually... He had been really worried about him. Come back tomorrow to find out what happens in the last chapter of The Explorer.